Hey everybody, Jamie here from the Enigmatic Nomadics YouTube channel and I have some very uh, important announcements coming up very soon regarding the van build, the 2018 van build party that's going to be in uh, Parker, Arizona starting November 1st. But before that, I want to show you an interview that I did of Tiki that has been archived for far too long. Tiki is a wonderful 62-year-old retiree that decided to buy a Class C and build out the inside of it in a way that just looks absolutely amazing but don't take my word for it let's go ahead and take a look and meet tiki let's take a look today i'm here with tiki who lives in a class c an older class c that she's upfitted on the inside. I think you're really going to like the inside of her rig and she's just starting out into the lifestyle. I think you're really going to like Tiki also and with that I give you Tiki. Hi y'all. So this is my fifth day boondocking. I have been watching YouTube videos for a year learning as much as I can but I'll tell you the more you can learn before you come out is great but being out here with other people and actually utilizing all of the knowledge that you've gained and all of your equipment that you've worked on you just pick it up so fast and so all the worry prior to getting out here was pretty much wasted energy because you just pick it up it's easy um, I'm 62 I just retired October 18th I'm on Social Security I don't owe a dime in the world, and I don't have a dime. <laughs> so it's a darn good thing I don't owe anything. Um, retirement to me was, what kind of mischief can I get into? I love exploring. I'm happiest when I'm absolutely exhausted. I heard an expression recently called thinking with your hands, and it was a woodworker. And I thought, that is stunning to think with your hands. It's like you're problem solving through a situation as you're coming up to it and you're just in the flow. So, um, so yeah, I researched quite a bit on the rig. There were some criteria. When I first started out looking for something, I thought $40,000, 40,000 miles. And I went out and looked at quite a few rigs on Craigslist. I found one that I thought I wanted, that they wanted 15000 for. And I actually took it into my local RV center. And they, I spent $350 to have them do a complete survey on it. And I didn't buy it. Um, as I went through the process, I realized that as long as it was structurally sound, and this is a fiberglass body completely with steel framing, which is really unusual. Uh, so structurally, it's very sound. It had bad tires, but that's nothing. Um, it only had 42,000 miles on it. So I was very interested in it. I, I saw what I could do with the inside almost immediately. But I had my mechanic that I trust with my life come out and he went nuts. He said, I have never seen a machine this clean. He just couldn't get over it. He was going to buy it if you didn't? He probably would have. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right. Jamie. But yeah, so I had put, I've had it for a year, October. I've had it for a whole year, just getting ready for retirement and fixing it up inside and taking it on itty bitty baby trips. I had a total of 57 miles on it before wow. I headed out last week and uh, it drove like an absolute dream I'm just so pleased uh, second gear is my best friend it'll take me up hills it'll take me down hills and I watch the temperature gauge and it just stays even so yeah I'm real pleased with it why an RV if you're retiring why not something else why not uh just well, travel and not have a home or live in a home. Don't you? I'm very much. I'm. I like to have my life very organized. I like things around me that are aesthetically pleasing, 
that are functional. Um, and when you travel, you're in a different hotel room every night. Um, and of course, there's bed bugs now too, which is disgusting. So I would much rather stay in my own home and travel maybe less, but enjoy it way more. Um, I've had a boat. Uh, I had a 45 foot coastal cruiser 20 years ago that I lived on in the marina. Um, but then I love sailing and I ended up right. selling that boat and going sailing. Uh, spent a year in Catalina on a 41 foot Morgan out island. And I love the idea of a boat too. And I would have done it if the marina were free. But it would have cost me $510 just for the marina. And my social security is $985. That wasn't really computing too much for me. I've done quite a bit of traveling already in other countries, and I like seeing this. I like seeing the stars at night. I like seeing the shadows on the mountains as the sun's setting. It doesn't take much to please me. As a, as a woman or female traveler, do you have any concerns about your safety or did None. that factor in? Not at all. I have really good antennae. Um, I have a nice dog that takes good care of me. Dog. Let me make sure I get him. This is Rocco. Rocco was trained in a women's prison in Chicago as a service dog, but he flunked. Mm. And I got lucky. Okay. So that was a win win. He wouldn't stop eating the people that were <laughs> the problem. He's kind of shy. Is that right? Yeah, he's kind of shy. In fact, when I take him to the vet, the vet has to bring his dog into the room because if there's another dog around, he calms down. Okay. So, yeah. So he has some issues, but they don't uh, they don't bother me. So, yeah, I don't really have much. And that's one of the things about being on wheels. I mean, it takes a while to break down, but I mean, if I had to, I could just get in the driver's seat and go. Another thing I really love about this rig is the seats both turned toward the back of the RV so it became a living room. So I didn't have to modify that. And they're at the same level. There's no step up. Right, I noticed that. Really which like is that. so weird. It's so unusual. Well, I guess the designers wanted it that way and that's something they got right. They did get it right. How about showing us the inside? I would love to show you the inside. You know, Jamie, I've been watching your videos for so long. It's so weird to be on this side of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hear good things about it around the campfire, so let's go in and take a look. Yep, we like to see each other's rigs. All right, let's do it. So you don't scare her. <laughs> <laughs> so when I bought it, it's a 1984 23-foot C-Class with 42,000 miles on it when I bought it. And it looked, it was farm fresh. It had been owned by um, an engineer that just babied it. And so that was the living room. And this lovely thing was the bathroom. Okay. And there it is with all the flocked wallpaper. So that's the original wallpaper? That's it. And then this is the original layout. I was able to find that. And so the bed was a double. Just a little bit. The bed was a double. Okay. There was a little chair here, and then it had the normal banquette with the little weird sink, so you kind of walk sideways through here. So here's what I did. I just took all this out up to the stove. That's the original stove still in it, and made a desk. Okay. A little bit. Okay. Okay, took that chair out, put in storage. So that's that's the way it looks now. Okay. What is this on the table? This is actually right here. This is a little auxiliary slide out desk that can be for more kitchen prep or more desk space or a standing desk. What kind type of wood is it? It's just plywood. Is My that favorite. a special kind of plywood? If you were it's, to go buy it, what would you say? I think it's birch, but I'm not sure. It's just it's up from construction grade so you plywood. say you want birch plywood yeah so that's what it looks like and it's got five coats now of spar varnish that's the marine varnish 
spar varnish polyurethane and why five coats why not two coats well just to make humor myself because i'm going to be doing food prep on it okay so anyway that's it and the outside you can go ahead and film if you want to jamie i'm totally embarrassed by it <laughs> But I kind of didn't do anything to the outside for a couple of reasons. One is it costs money. Uh -huh. And it would be like putting lipstick on a pig. Right. <laughs> the other is if it's in its original condition, it really doesn't cause anybody to think, hmm, I think I'll break into that. Right. <laughs> so there it is. And then I've got the 100 watt solar panel that is all I need at this point. And who makes that solar panel? That's the Renogy, 100 watt, monocrystalline. And did you just connect that to your current house? I have it going it? right in through the vent because I don't have the AGM yet. I still have the kind that you have to add water to. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's up, Frankie? How you doing? Yeah, no, please don't, because I'm already camera shy, and you're making me more camera shy. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> okay, so I keep the extra dog food out here. Savannah, would you like to come in? Is she okay in there? Oh, yeah. In you go. And I'll turn some lights on and the music on. Okay. So here's my desk. And I have all my little storage bins underneath that I actually had from home. I just brought them. And that piece that we saw outside, Jamie? Yes. That goes on top of here. All right. So, in fact, I'm going to go get it. Okay. I don't know if, how well the camera is picking this up, but it looks very contemporary and clean and fresh in here. It looks, looks really good. She did a great job. In the bathroom, I'm sure she's gonna show me, but look at how good this is. And that looks like a nature's head composting toilet. So there's a little hole in this side because when I'm driving, I put a pin in it to keep it from rolling out. But that's the way that goes. Came out nice. It did. It looks good. It works. So do you it, come from a background of doing woodwork or was this you your know, first project? It's so weird. I grew up, my mom was a builder. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up on site doing like cleaning the windows and stuff before they put the houses on the market. And I think I just kind of assimilated, just kind of picked it up. So I think you might find this interesting down here. Come on down. Okay. So here we have an earthquake strap that comes off. That's really nice. Ta-da! That is... So I can, it's a 32 inch Vizio, cheap, cheap. And I can also watch it from the cab area. This is what you call an articulating arm. There are varying degrees, but that arm really articulates. Where would you get something like that? I got it on Amazon and it's called a robot arm. And uh, it's not the robot arm that has the trademark with it. I mm -hmm. bought one of those and it was too hard for me to adjust. So what I ended up doing, oh, while I have this out, let me show you something else. All right. This slides out and that's my printer. So you have a printer with you. Do you do office work ongoing or? I don't. I was a landscape designer mm -hmm. and I was thinking that I would continue to work part-time, but I retired on October 18th. So gotcha. I have it now. I can, I can make, you know, pictures or if I have something scanned to me. Well, it's nice to be able to put it out is. your insurance records and things like exactly. that. Exactly. And mom's in charge of mailing me my stuff. Okay. So anyway, that goes like that. And then underneath we have my quick tools, things I need all the time. All right. And then in this one. Those are really nice bins. Where do you get bins that are shiny like that? Um, Ikea. Okay. And then this is my 
haunted box. This is the stuff that haunts me that needs to get done that I haven't done yet. Okay. <laughs> now you're making me wonder if I have a lot of haunted boxes exactly. around my <laughs> camp that I didn't even know what to call. And follow. I have a mystery nut. Okay. That'll haunt me. Okay, so these I had in my office at home, and they're just Ikea drawers, but boy, they're lightweight, and they come in so handy. What did something like that run you, if you don't mind I me think asking? they're $39, and they come in white, and red, and gray, and maybe yellow. But what I love about them is, when I was doing landscape design, if I wanted my ornamental section, I just pulled the whole drawer out and put it on my desk. Very nice. Excuse what me, do you Savannah. Do? Savannah, come here. Good girl. Excuse me, Savannah. Good girl. So yeah, that's all bits and pieces. What do you do when you travel about those uh, shelves coming open? Do you What a worry great about question, it? Jamie. <laughs> Let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> this fits under here. And then I use the command strips and that's it. And they ain't going anywhere. And did you make that? Of course. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah, it works. It works. And this box I've had for a long time, and I noticed just today that the screw is up, so I need to back it out and put it back in again. All right. But these are just like electronics. It doesn't seem like you really have that much on the road. You've got it tucked away nicely. And it's not a lot. It takes about 20 minutes just because I mess around to pack or undo. Mm -hmm. But this is my utility closet, vacuum and broom and stuff. I just picked this up for $2.50. It's the best broom I ever owned in my life. Nice. I know. Where would you get something like that? I got it at a little store in Ehrenberg. Ehrenberg? Yeah. There's no stores in Ehrenberg. Yeah, little bitty store. You didn't get it at the mall, did you? No. So there's my shoe storage. This is my green waste. So I can take that outside and bury it somewhere. Coffee grounds mostly. Gotcha. And then the I redid the cabinet doors, so I had to come around. Redo bit. those. Um, and I just reused all the interior hardware because it works great. I like the color too. What would you? characterize that color what would you call it fawn I don't know it has a name but I can't remember what it is it looks kind of like gray but it's, it's a got a little bit it's of a taupey uh, kind of it's between gray and tan yeah it's between gray and tan it that's an ex yeah. excellent way to describe it and, and you made all these too you made these cabinets also the, the base cabinets were here and so I just reused them and uh, all I did was redo the doors Gotcha. Look at this cool little thing. Can you see the lights back there? Okay. Is that cute? Absolutely. I like the way you have it all labeled too, so you can not only see it visually, but it's labeled so you know. I've only if been it's empty. on the road for six days. I'm still learning where I put everything. I need gotcha. the labels for me. <laughs> gotcha. Well. And then this is the oven that I haven't used yet, but I'll figure that out. And it's got a nice three burner. I had to refinish that. It was all pitted. So they actually sell um, a spray that's a heat resistant spray specifically for stoves and things. So you can't. I refinished this and that. And now it looks pretty good. What color was it before? This was brown. Okay. And this was rust. <laughs> right. And what I've done here is I just used a really inexpensive $5.99 towel rack from Home Depot. And the reason is, is it was wood and I could cut it to the size that I needed specifically to hold all my oils and things. So I don't even have to move that stuff on the road. Where do you get those little containers? I ordered them on Amazon. I got six of this size and six of that size. And you They're just not. have your cooking oils and flavors and things. Everything. So everything's and neat I have and tidy. The stuff I don't use as much up here, but there's Tabasco. You are so much more organized than I'll probably ever be. <laughs> and then the knives, my friend said, you should take those down when you drive. Because you if noticed? you have to stop fast, they could all end up in your ch -ch -ch right? back. <laughs> so I do. Okay, I so put them all them here. Down. Yeah. Um, we have this drawer for kitchen stuff and to be able to light the oven. This is my inverter down here when I'm plugged into a nut 
converter when I'm plugged into shore power. Okay. And then you can get these at the dollar store. And because of moisture buildup in RVs, you don't have to worry about it too much in Arizona. But they come with a uh, sealed top. You pop that off and you take it off. And as this fills up with water, it's pulling the moisture out of your RV. Where do you get those? Dollar store. Moisture so, eliminator. And they're like so expensive, even at Walmart. So you guys, dollar store. Dollar store moisture eliminator. I didn't even know. And hopefully like I will never need these. Yeah, you're going to need them. I know. I know. I get a mouse a year. Oh, God. That's my average. That's my, my greatest fear. Okay, so the bed, I went from a full size to, which wasn't a full size, to a twin. The bed came out to here, and it was one of those angled. Right. To make you feel like you had more room in the kitchen. But I looked underneath, and there was four and a half inches to the water tank, which was like huge prime real estate. <laughs> so I took it all apart, cut it back, and gained. I went from walking this way to walking this way. Nice. Four and a half inches makes all the difference, as the actor said to the bishop. <laughs> I, what I think I'm getting from you here is that it's okay to buy something that was made from the factory to be lived in and use it as a platform to improve on. Just Absolutely. One of my favorite sayings is, I love regimentation. It gives me something precise to deviate from. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. So don't be intimidated if you're watching this. And, you know, just because the, the engineers got together and laid out a rig and and built mass for the masses them. yeah it doesn't mean that they got it right or that they knew what they were doing or that they live in rigs themselves right and a lot of especially older rvs you'll find the layouts have been improved on since as people spend more time in them and learn how to get around and make things more comfortable and you just took one and, and did everything that you wanted to do yourself i like to think of it as a bespoke suit you know you get it tailor-made right so everybody's needs are different mm -hmm. um, you know you get it you know you don't like the aesthetics of it and that's very important but also as important is how does it work for you are the counters the right height just all of those things and you need to kind of let it tell you so right when I got the mattress on Amazon and it came in a little bitty roll like that and then you bring it in and you cut it and you stand back because it becomes the tomato that ate New York. Right. Um, it was falling down on the corner because this bed frame was cut that way. To, you know, to go in. So what I did was I made a corner, put it on hinges and it became a storage area. Oh, that's great. So, let me get Please out of your way. Wise. No, I, can, I get the idea. And I have a collapsible bucket that hangs right there. And you'd be surprised what's in here. This is all extra cleaning stuff. Then I have my... I can get it. Do you want to see this stuff, Jamie? Sure. So this is one of those two and a half gallon buckets that swivels the top and I can use it to keep liquids that I don't want to spill but I can also use this cool little 12 volt shower okay. I can put this outside and make a solar shower out of it that's nice because the black just absorbs the heat so you have not only your inside shower, but you're set up for a portable outside shower in the case that and it's I a hot And I could day actually run the hose that's long enough right in through the escape hatch window in the bathroom, which you'll see in a minute, and shower in my shower stall. I don't even have to shower outside. Okay, you want to cut it a minute while I put sure. this stuff away? Tell me about this ceiling. This is amazing. It, it's well, bright. It opens up. Let me tell you, okay. if the ceiling had been in good shape when I bought it, I wouldn't have done anything.
but it was fabric and it was falling down and I don't know if it was the glue but if I pulled it it would just rain this nasty dust so I had to do something and this is from Home Depot it comes I think five boards in a pack and they're maybe eight feet long it's twenty dollars a pack and it's called Naughty Cedar and I put the whole stack in the back of my Prius and went doop 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 yeah that'll work because <laughs> it <laughs> right. was light right okay because you don't have to be so careful about weight let me show this fan is this a fantastic fan that one's fantastic okay I bought that first and where did you get this fan um that probably Amazon you mind me asking what you paid I don't remember you uh, can ask did it have uh, any features besides crank it up and turn on three speeds well it kind of has everything but the cover you know but it has here so it does have the remote it has the remote you can set the temperature because I have a dog and I, now I have two <laughs> right. <laughs> so then, uh, she's what do you think, honey? She's fine. Leave her. So you can open this up with the remote. Does it have a thermostat where you can set it to turn yeah, off? Yeah, it has a, certain... a thermostat. It also has a rain sensor, but I haven't tested it. So. So everything but the cover. Right, on Amazon. and I have the outside cover for it at home, but I thought I'll just leave it off. All right. And then this used to be a Heg fan. It was just, you know, the cheapest fan in the whole wide world. So I traded that out, and this is a Max fan. And I like this one so much better than the Fantastic fan. Um, but what's nice is I can set one coming in and one going out because they both re reverse. Oh, that's a great idea. And it just creates a wind tunnel. And it you can feel it already. Yeah. You can. Yeah, that is an so absolutely brilliant in. idea. And if you were to do it all over again, all things being equal, you would say that the Max fan. I would get two Max fans. The Max fan, although the, the Fantastic Max, fan is okay. It is. No, it is. But the the Max fan comes with the outside shell. I would have upgraded to a remote on the Max. Okay. But you know, I was, I was sucking fumes by then. Right. <laughs> I was running out of cash. So. Gotcha. Now, the shower is interesting because it was that vinyl stuff, literally vinyl, that was just like vinyl wallpaper and got ugly. And so I spent three days meticulously peeling it off. And underneath was this gorgeous mahogany paneling that was stunning. So then I spent a week sanding and varnishing it but it was so dark it was like a cave. Gotcha. So I ended up, then I went in and I got marine paint and I just put three coats of marine paint on it after caulking everything. And it's actually Rocco's bed when I'm not showering. So we share the space. Well, it looks fantastic. And he loves it. This whole area, let me get in and These are around. Turkish towels. Mm -hmm. and What's the deal with those? They're super light. They dry really, really fast. Almost and looks like a sheet. I know, but they're super absorbent. The trick with it is you don't use any fabric softener because that'll keep them from being absorbent. But I love those. And I raised the bed. Let me just film the rest okay. of this. This is original. This I reused. <laughs> okay. This is from Ikea. That looks great in there. And I just did Velcro straps to hold everything in when I travel. And because they're not ugly, I leave them on all the time. Looks great. In fact, I really like the fact that if you wanted to, you could have the TV on and watch. I know. While you're taking a shower. Exactly. That's stuff that's important to me. <laughs> what do you usually watch on TV? What is it? CD, DVDs or I don't. You have an antenna? I don't. You don't use the TV that much? No, it's just there to, for awe factor. Gotcha. No, when I'm plugged in, like to a park, if they've got, I might. Right. But I do a channel search, and if channels come up, I mean, I really want PBS. I kill for that. There's a lot of PBS out here. Good. So I haven't even done a channel search since I've been here. But what I did here is I raised the bed up this much. 
and I use this as a measurement. These are my fancy sleepwear. <laughs> Works. <laughs> it does work. And so this part lifted up to get to everything underneath. So what I had to do was I had to build it so that the top lifted. Okay. And then it all comes up and then the bottom lifts. So you can still access underneath. Tell me about this toilet. Is this the toilet that came with it when you bought it? Let's have a little potty talk. Okay. <laughs> no. I did not want a black tank and this was my biggest splurge. Um, they run almost a thousand dollars. I did get it on eBay. I was in a bidding war and I ended up paying $8.85 and I think I stole it. Okay. So I'm real pleased with that. But it's a nature's head and they were actually designed for yachts for the marine world. Oh. Um, because you don't want to dump stuff into the sea. But what's lovely about them is they don't use any water to flush. So you've got a urine receptacle, and then I'm just going to open it, and you have a solid receptacle, and there's no smell. And I have to say that with the toilet flap opened, there literally is no smell. How does that happen? What's going on to make that What happen? happens is, it's when you combine the liquid and the solids that creates all the nasty bacteria and the smell. As long as you keep them separate, they're fine. The solids, I use cocoa fiber and you just give it a, there's a little crank on the side and you just crank it about three times and that's all you do. And at some point in another couple of months, maybe I will have to empty it. And you just take a big plastic bag and you empty it. And that's it. It's do, done. Do you replace anything inside of it? Cocoa mulch, and that's it. And you do Cocoa not wash mulch. it. And you don't wash it because there's the good bacteria in there. Okay. But it literally smells like garden soil. There's no odor. There at all is when you open no the odor. Flap. Um, the urine receptacle I found, if I put about a quarter cup of vinegar in there after I've emptied it, it cuts down the urine smell completely. Is that special vinegar? Like no, I vinegar? don't use my good vinegar. I use the cheapest vinegar I can find. In fact, one of our buds went to the store. I said, could you get me butter and vinegar? Okay. Because <laughs> I use vinegar for cleaning and washing dishes and you can rinse your hair with it. It's great stuff. I like the composting toilet for that choice in RVs and would not be surprised if that starts to become an option. On, in new ones. I know. It's got to. It's, it's so happen. smart. I mean, who wants to empty a black tank? And of course, water conservation is so key. Arizona, California, you know, it's just, it's heartbreaking to flush a gallon and a half of water down a toilet. By the way, drinking water. Yes. We what about flush it? flush our toilets with drinking water. I in, know. In uh, first world countries. Speaking of drinking water. Okay. Are you familiar with this? This was my second yeah. big splurge, but it really wasn't that much. Because when you think about buying bottled water and everything, this is a Berkey water filter. And look at the filters in there, Jamie. Okay. You what can, are those? You can put pond water in here. What? And it will filter out three pages of fine print of stuff. And it will come out clear as a bell. You can put red dye in it, yeah, and it will come out clear. It filters out everything. That's crazy. I know. Where do you get it? Um, I got it on Amazon. <laughs> and you literally, I can just fill it up right here. So you're filling up your your fresh water from a hose at an RV park or someplace where you can get it. I have a pot of portable. Uh, what is it called? Um, potable. Potable water. Potable water hose, and I just whatever water source. So I have no qualms about drinking water from my fresh water tank. Sure. So it goes from wherever source I can get it into my fresh water tank, and then it goes into the Berkey. So I do all my cooking and drinking water with this. Rocco gets that water. Gets the tap. Okay. <laughs> We don't have him spoiled. Well, you know, I'll change Savannah's water dish because I'll see things in it that aren't clean. Right. And I feel bad about that. And yeah. then I'll watch her walk over and drink out of a pond that you can't even of see course. the bottom of. 
I don't get it. I know she doesn't know it, but she is a dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, under here. You mind if we turn the fan off because I don't know how much it's please, picking up. Please, yeah. And now I can't stand that background noise anyway. And the, this one you can't hear, and that one you so can't. So that's another point about the Absolutely. Max fan. Absolutely. So. Let's just show this up here. You can do that. Okay, so. Over the wheel well here, I had, this is the only help I had. I had a professional plumber help me reroute the pipe so they went straight back and across. Otherwise they would have cut my usable space in half on a diagonal, which All would right. have made me absolutely nuts. So this comes out and then this rolls out. And you. I'm guessing that wasn't in the rig when you bought it? No, I just built it over the wheel well and I insulated my wheel wells with Reflectix and then vinyl over the top of that and uh, those are my placemats underneath. Everything has a place. Um, this I keep plugged in. There's a plug right there but this is my washing machine and dryer. For your Do you want dishes to see or clothes. For clothes. Well, first I'd like for you to tell me where you got this slide out drawer and what it's called and how somebody could get one if they wanted one. I would love to be able to answer that question, Jamie, but I actually got it at a place called Dave's that gets <coughs> all of um, Costco's cast offs, like returns and things. Mm. It was the only one they had, and I kept going back for almost a month on a weekly basis hoping to find another one because I just love it. Okay. But originally it did come from Costco. So Costco slide drawer? Yeah. Slide, what would you call I, don't it? I don't know. It's just a sliding drawer rack a thingy. Sliding drawer rack. It looks great. It's a dumaflachi. It looks very sturdy. It is sturdy. <laughs> okay. So you want me to show you this or Absolutely. not? Yeah. Okay. So this is my washing machine underneath. Not that, this. And I can put this right in the sink or I can take it outside, wash my clothes, and then you just open the drain to let it drain out. And then for drying, I use a, the biggest salad spinner I could find. <laughs> So that's a salad spinner? It's a salad spinner. And I don't put salad in it. I just put t-shirts or whatever and you put one in there and you just do exactly what your washing machine would do. And it spins the water out and then you can hang it up to dry. You could probably go long periods without having to go to a laundromat. I probably could, hand. although I'm pretty spoiled. If there's one anywhere around, I'll go to it. Right. But in a pinch, it's good to have, and then this is camp soap okay. that I can also clean the floors with. <laughs> what do you do to stay warm in here if the temperatures drop enough that you would need to have some type of a heat source? Well, my first line of defense is always to just put on more clothes. That's obvious. So, you know, I have my two sweater drawers. By the way, this is an Ikea piece that I got. I don't know if people know this, but in Ikea, every Ikea has um, a final sale area. And you can buy the best, coolest stuff in there that's the place I go first so that's where I got this this space had three little drawers in it and now I have like all oh, this room yeah you do. I do a lot of room there so yeah, yeah first closet. line of defense clothes and a hat because you lose most of your heat through your head second line of defense is the buddy heater and I have the not the little one that sits on top of the canister, but I have the medium size. 
And look, Savannah left me a sassy. Yeah, I see that. So I have the buddy heater back here, Jamie. So I bought the case because it keeps everything nice and compact. We've got a nice hose, an extra filter. Um, it's a nice idea to filter to protect the uh, equipment. Place for canisters on the side. The filter wouldn't be necessary with the canisters, but it is necessary with the hose, correct? As, from my understanding, yes. Okay. Um, and then and there it is. There's the baby right there. And I keep another canister inside. And what it does is you just screw it into the side. And I keep a little bottle of soapy water so that I can squirt it every time to make sure there's no leak and there's never been a leak. But it's just, it's smart to do. And uh, it's got two settings, high and low. And they say that it's best to, when you first turn it on, to go up from pilot, go ahead and turn it right to high because it brings that heating element into full um, use. However, I'm not sure how necessary it is. And then some brilliant person just told me this morning that you could probably keep this the pilot light on to keep the chill off during the night as long as you've got a window cracked. What do you think about that idea? Well, if somebody just left the pilot light on to keep a little heat coming in, how much heat do you think that that flame would put out? Uh, probably 157.7 BTUs. <laughs> <laughs> well, every BTU counts some nights. <laughs> well, that's what a candle puts out, so I figure it'd be about the same. Right? Yeah. How do you like it? I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, it does, uh, propane is a wet heat though. Uh -huh. So you definitely want a window cracked both for, you know, any kind of fumes, but also to help dissipate the moisture a little bit. Um, the first time I used it, I was parked at a girlfriend's house just to test some of the things I was doing to make sure I was on the right track. And, uh, I used it for probably about three hours because it was cold and I had rain on the inside of my windows. Mm. Do you think that that size is good enough for your rig? How long a rig this, is this and do you think I that's I am right so size? glad I didn't buy the big one. Okay. Because this is the perfect size for me. And I literally now, if I need it, I will just have it on for maybe 10 or 15 minutes just to put, just to take the chill off because it's well insulated. Right. What is this, maybe 26 feet? 23. 23 feet. So yep. a 23 foot rig, the, the size with just the one ceramic plate. I wouldn't go any bigger fine. personally, you know, and I don't believe in wasting fuel either, so I'm not gonna just luxuriate in the heat. I'm right. going to take the chill off, do what it needs to do until I can get to a comfortable position and then that's it. It's done its job. Um, and don't be afraid. Just trust yourself. I mean, if you're even thinking about it, the chances are you should do it. There's something telling you. And you just keep learning and learning and learning until you're comfortable enough. Um, you can rent something. I mean, you could do that. But if you're thinking about it, just do it. Great advice. Any last words? Later, Gator. Okay.